Here, Paul, we're going to look at a story from the narrative of Matthew where Jesus and the disciples were walking one day and Peter begins to ask him a question about forgiveness, about keeping a record of wrongs. Now watch Paul how Peter begins to open the conversation in Matthew 18, verse 21 to 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times, my Lord. Now, can we pause there for a moment, Paul? Because, uh, you know, Peter Poe is somebody that maybe, maybe from the very beginning did not first understand forgiveness by saying, forgive someone seven times. Maybe in the very beginning, Peter said, forgiving someone for one time is enough or maybe even two times enough. So now he's walking with Jesus. He's been living with God for quite some time. And he understands what it is to forgive more than he did before. And so maybe this was a Peter somehow trying to uh, in Tagalog, nagpapasikat kay Jesus. Maybe he was trying to bag and boast that he's understanding forgiveness now by saying, Lord, how often should we forgive? He doesn't even wait for Jesus to answer. He answers himself and he says, seven times? Sort of to say, uh, Lord, look at me. Uh, my understanding of forgiveness had grown. Before I would say one or two. Now I'm saying, Lord, seven times to forgive, right? But Jesus shatters that even more. And he answers by saying, no. No, Peter, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Now, what's the point here, Po? Like maybe you and I, we had assumed that forgiveness is all about the benefit of the offender. But here, I hope, Po, we get to see it in a much deeper way, where Jesus challenges Peter and us to look at forgiveness not only for the benefit of the offender, but mainly, Po, for the benefit of our relationship with Him. So the story continues in Matthew 18, verse 23 to 25. Jesus tells a parable. And here Paul will look at the last thing, which is the purpose of forgiveness. So remember, we looked at the principle of forgiveness. We looked at the process of forgiveness. And now the purpose of forgiveness. So therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay, so his master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. So can you imagine, Paul, how serious the debt here, how serious the offense here? In verse 26 and 27, but the man fell down before his master and begged him, Please be patient with me. I will pay it all back. And probably you can imagine the people that were listening to Jesus tell this story were probably giggling because they are probably saying, How can this man say, I'll pay it all back when he can't even do so from very so much small things? But then the master was filled with pity for him and he released him and forgave his debt. You know what's so encouraging here, Paul, for us? That the master was moved not by the skill or the strength of the person, but he was moved by the realness and the brokenness of the person. And isn't it true with the same with you and I, that forgiveness begins to seep into our hearts not because of the skill or the strength of people, but because of realness and brokenness. And so the master was moved in verse 28 to 31, Matthew continues to, tell this, to record the story. But when a man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him not a million dollars, but only a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat, demanded instant payment. This fellow servant fell down before him, begged for a little more time, and verbatim the exact same words. He says, be patient with me, I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor couldn't wait. He had the man arrested, put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. So they went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Now here's something very important. The king here represents God. Here's what he did in verse 32 to 34. And then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant. I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Now, shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? And then the angry king sent the man to prison 
to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. French Village, can I invite you to lean in on this one? The moral of the story is this. Jesus is saying, Peter, you have to forgive every single time. Because if you don't, I'm going to do to you just as that king did to the servant. I'm going to come after you. Now, I'll pause there for a moment, Paul, because maybe this is something that's very sensitive for us, Paul. Maybe we're saying, Lord, I've been hurt. Lord, I had been wronged. Lord, I had been offended. Lord, I was actually the victim in this. But Lord, you're saying also that as someone is coming after me on this one, Lord, you also will come after me because I'm okay and hurt. But parang, Lord, take a muna. Wait, 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 wait. Lord, that's too much. Lord, someone's after me, but you're going to say also that you're after me because I was the victim. I can't understand this. But watch this, ano po? Jesus begins to even challenge us to the point to threaten us, to disturb us. Because the ending statement of that parable is in verse 35. Jesus said, That's what my heavenly Father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Take lang muna, Lord. Ha? Wait, 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 Lord. Is that the moral of the story? Lord, I was hurt. Lord, I was offended. Lord, things had been done to me. And the truth is, but also, honestly, I can't, uh, I can't really say that per se because I don't really know po your story. Maybe you're somebody po that can come up here one day. Maybe you're somebody po that can tell that story. And when you tell your story, you're gonna really say, and we're gonna really agree with you that you know you're right. Hold on to your hurt. Hold on to your anger. Hold on to that bitterness because maybe we can really feel angry also for maybe that person that had wronged you, that had hurt you, that had victimized you. And maybe many of us will say, you're right in holding on to unforgiveness. But you know what, Paul Village? This is not me saying it anymore. This is God saying it. God says, Anak, you must forgive. You must forgive. Because if you don't, you will push the self-destruct button. And I love you enough not to do that to yourself. And so while you're holding on to that forg- unforgiveness, God says, if you don't forgive, I'm going to come after you. If you don't forgive, I'm going to break down the walls that you're building up. I'm going to run after you because I love you too much for you to self-destruct. To keep those records of wrongs is to choose to self-destruct. It's like cancer. It's going to eat you alive. And I love you too much not to do that to yourself. So the darkness that you're hiding in, I'm going to light that up. I'm going to run after you. The lies maybe that you're building in your heart, in your mind, that you play, replay over and over again, God says, I'm going to write those lies. Because I don't want you to self-destruct until we're able to forgive our brothers and our sisters from our hearts. All right, thank you for visiting our YouTube channel. Again, if you like the content that we have, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to share this content, we do have discussion questions in the descriptions below. Uh, Don't forget, we also have our Sunday services live at pinnaclevillage.org every Sunday. So with that, thank you for joining us.